Sunday and welcome back to my channel. This week we are going to be making some really really fun and beautiful DIY concrete bowls and a concrete vase. This is going to be a really inexpensive and easy to complete DIY. The biggest thing is just going to be letting the concrete dry. If you are interested in seeing how to make DIY concrete bowls and vases, then make sure to like and subscribe so you can see more of my videos. I put out new videos every single Sunday and we are really, really trying to hit a goal of meeting 10,000 subscribers by the end of this year, so December. We would love it if all of you who are not subscribed subscribe to the channel and join our DIY community so that we can meet that goal and you'll be able to see more of our content and videos that we put out every single week. So if you'd like to see how to make DIY concrete bowls and a concrete vase, then stick around and watch this video and we're going to get right into it. Alright guys, so to make our DIY concrete bowls and vase, we're going to need just a couple of materials. You'll need some quick dry cement, a couple of balloons, we're also going to need a little plastic cup or Tupperware that you don't mind getting some concrete on, and that is pretty much everything that you will need. We're going to start by mixing up some cement and using our balloons to make a mold. So I mixed up our cement and I just did a small amount because I don't think this is going to take a ton. We can always mix more up and I just used some quick dry cement. I'll link what I use below for you guys in case you want to use the same thing, but any quick dry cement will work. And then I have three balloons that I got at the dollar store just in a little bundle of balloons. These, the color does not matter. We're just going to use them to make our mold. I have two to make the little bowls and then one to make the vase. If you want to do more than two bowls, then you would just need more balloons. So we're going to go ahead and blow these up. You will do two of them to the size of the bowl that you want and then the last one you're going to do <laughs> the last one you're going to do to be your vase size. So that'll just be how big you want your vase to be. If you want it to be a larger vase then you need to blow it up bigger. If you want a small vase then smaller. So this is going to be one of mine for a bowl and then I'll do another bowl a little bit smaller than this so they're kind of like a nesting situation. Alright, so these are my two bowl sizes. This one is slightly smaller so that hopefully they can kind of sit inside of each other or look like that sort of nesting bowl type look. And then I'm going to blow up the last one to be the vase size. And I'm just setting these inside of some old Tupperware and an empty espresso container just so that I have something to hold them up when we put our cement on them. So now that we have all of our balloons blown up, I'm going to put some gloves on because we are going to be handling the cement. You don't want to get that on your skin. I'm just going to keep some gloves on while I'm doing this. Your cement should be about this consistency where you could hold it in your hand and it's not going to fall through your fingers. So you want to use less water than you maybe normally would. And all we are going to do for this process is set your balloon in some kind of container to hold it up and we're going to spread our cement over it as evenly as you can. Okay, so something like this, you can put it up as high on the balloon as you want to make your lip of your bowl taller or shorter. And you just want to make it relatively even in thickness so that you don't have any gaps showing through where you can see the balloon and it's going to be thick enough that your bowl won't be too fragile. Once you have that all done, we're going to turn this so that our cement side is facing up. And then we'll set it into some kind of container to hold it upright while it dries and just try to do it as smoothly as you can. I'm getting fingerprints in mine that I'll have to smooth out, but that's okay. Okay, so we covered both of our bowls and they're off drying in Tupperwares. And we're going to do our last one, which is the vase. I have not done a vase like this before. I've not done any of these before. So we're going to give this a go and see how it works. What I'm going to do for our balloon is cover it pretty much all the way up to where it's going to be touching the espresso container and we'll let that dry for a while and once it's completely dry to where we can flip it over and remove the balloon then we'll add on to it to continue to make our vase shape. Hopefully that will work out nicely. We're going to give it a try and see and if it doesn't we're going to find that out together. So I'm going to take a big old glob of cement and we are going to smear it all over to make an even layer. So to 
to continue this little experiment, I'm gonna try making a rim for the base of my vase. I don't know if it's gonna work, but we'll find out. I'm just gonna take some little bits and smush them on here and see what happens. Okay, so we're gonna position that to dry as best as it can, try to balance it. And I did try to center my little base as well as I could. I think it's a little bit off center, but I'm totally okay with that because the style of vase that I'm going for is going to be a little bit more organic and kind of that olive atelier style. So if it's a little bit crooked or something like that, I don't really mind. We are gonna let all of these dry. And Okay, so here are our two bowls all done. And what I did was I removed the balloon and then I took away any pieces that were like really thin and frail at the tops just to make sure that it was strong and it wasn't gonna break when it got hit. And now our bowls are super strong and really nice looking. So at this point, you could leave them like this. You could sand them down to be smoother. You can leave the texture. You have a lot of options. You also could paint them or just paint the inside or just the outside. There's a lot of things that you could do with these. What I think that I'm going to do is put a decorative element on the inside and then let the outside be the natural cement and maybe we'll put a little bit of gold foil on the rim. We can kind of play with them and see what looks good but we have our two bowls all done and they fit really nicely inside of each other so they also can stack well if you want them to be on display like this. So I'm going to set these off to the side while we finish our cement work and then we can come back and play with the decorative element of these. And then here is our vase. So this is most of the way done. We have the little base, which is actually working out really, really well. It stands up super nicely and isn't wobbly at all. And then our nice little opening to our vase. So what we're gonna do today is patch up any spots that are a little bit like see-through that we want to be stronger. We're gonna use this little Tupperware. It was from like a takeout order that I just cleaned out. And we're gonna use that to make the neck of our vase to give it a really pretty organic olive atelier sort of feel to it. I really like that style and I think that will look really pretty on display in our house. And then of course you could also use this to put like dried florals in or you could stick a little cup inside and put water and live flowers in it. I probably wouldn't put water straight in it. It might be fine but I'm just not completely sure if it would affect the vase at all if it's sitting in there like that. So I would probably put something inside of it if you're going to put water in. But there's a lot of other things that you can do with it to have a really pretty display piece. So I mixed up a little bit more cement. I have some gloves so that we can spread it on again. So let's start by just patching up any spots that may need it. Okay, so here's what I just learned. <laughs> when putting the wet cement on to patch up the thinner spots on our vase it kind of reactivated the cement and made it crumble so what i would recommend is either not patching it like that or keeping your balloon in so if you want to be able to add on to it like i'm doing then i would just keep the balloon in what i did to kind of fix the situation was blow a balloon up inside of it again and then just tie it off so this is where i'm at that is the side where the wall crumbled so we're gonna patch that and then we'll put 
put this little guy on top to make the neck. So we were able to fix it, but definitely not like the ideal situation. You wouldn't want to have to redo the balloon if you don't have to. So let's go ahead and fix this so that we can add our neck. And now this will give it something to adhere to so that it has structure. Here is what I've decided on. I didn't like putting this in here because I felt like it was going to get stuck when it dried. So what I'm doing is I'm forming up the neck of the base just like I did the rim at the bottom with just like little chunks of cement going on and then shaping it bit by bit so that it can kind of form up to be a neck and this is working out much better for me. That way when we pop the balloon it'll just have used the balloon to make it shape and it'll stay up. That's what, what I'm gonna try because I just think otherwise it's gonna get stuck, but it's definitely a learning process. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that have worked with cement a ton that knew all of this, but for me, it's something that I'm kind of learning as I go. So I wanted to share with you guys what I'm figuring out so that you can do it without making the same mistakes I did. I think that I will add a little bit more to the rim, but I'm not gonna make it too, too tall. And then we'll stop there and we'll let it dry. And once it's completely dry, we can take the balloon out. So really not a difficult process once you understand what you're doing, but just kind of takes a second to figure out the best route to get it done. Another thing that's helpful for building up like a rim like this is to let your cement dry just a little bit so that it's a little bit easier to work with. That definitely helps me. And I do want to make sure that my rim of the neck is thicker so that it doesn't break. And I really just kind of treat it like clay and kind of work with it like you're making a ceramic and smooth it and, you know, use the same tools and it works the same. And like I said before, this is not something that's going to be like a perfect base. That's not the style that I'm going for. It's going to be a lot more organic and just natural in shape. If you want it to be perfect, what I would do is either put a glass vase inside and put the cement over that or use some terracotta pots stacked up or something like that that has a set form and that will give you a more perfect shape. For me I wanted a more natural shape so I'm going with something like a balloon as my mold that will allow it to kind of bend and move so that the shape isn't quite as perfect. Okay so I'm gonna leave it at this and we're gonna let it dry and then we'll see how it looks when we remove our balloon. Okay, so for our bowls, now that they've had a little bit of time to fully set and dry, we're gonna go ahead and add some of the decorative elements to them. You could do a lot of things here. So you could paint them, you could leave them as they are, you could paint the inside or the outside or both. You could add gold foil to the top. There's so many different things that you could do to make these special and custom to your style. So I'm gonna show you one of the ways that you could customize these bowls and make them a little bit more unique. We are we're going to be adding a floral napkin detail to the inside and then some gold foiling on the rim. So I already went ahead and did the napkin on one of the bowls to make sure that it would work well and this is what it turns out like. I think it's really pretty and this is what it's going to look like when our second bowl is all dried with our napkin in it. To do this all you need is a napkin that you like the pattern of. I have these ones right here. I think they're really pretty. I got them at Ikea and you're also going to need some Mod Podge to glue it down. For the napkin, you want to separate the back white portion from the front decorative portion. You're just going to go to the edge and peel the two apart like this. There we go. So you do not need this white part. You just need the floral decorative part. You can throw this bit away. And you do want to have a napkin that is big enough to fully cover the inside of your bowl so that you're not trying to piece together a napkin. You probably will get some folds in your napkin when you're gluing it down. So if that bothers you, you can cut it and place it really specifically. For me, it doesn't really bother me very much. So mine has folds, but you can do that to your preference. 
We're gonna set the napkin off to the side and we're gonna put a light and like seriously I mean light layer of Mod Podge on the bottom. You don't want it to be soaked because it will tear your napkin if it's too wet. So just enough so that your napkin is sticking. And I like to use the matte Mod Podge but they also have glossy ones if you want it to have a little bit of a sheen. I'm just taking an old paintbrush that I have and I'll dip it in and then we're just gonna brush it all over our bowl to give it a nice base. Okay, so now that we have it fully covered in Mod Podge, we're gonna place our napkin inside how you want it to look and then put a light coat of Mod Podge on top of the napkin. So now that it's all glued down, we are going to go ahead and trim the extra off. And then I'll just use a tiny little bit of Mod Podge to make sure that the ends are sealed up nicely after messing with them and pulling them away to trim them. All right, perfect. So we're gonna set this off to the side to dry and then I'm gonna work with our dry one to add our foil. So here's the foil that I have. I've used it for a very long time. It lasts forever. It's a pretty large pack and I got it off Amazon. So I'll link anything that I can below for you guys. And what you wanna do with this is break it into little pieces to work with. And I'm gonna be putting mine on the rim. So I'm just gonna add some Mod Podge to my rim where I want the foil to go on both sides. Place the foil on top. Try not to handle it a ton with your hands because it will just start to kind of pull apart if you do that. You more want to use the Mod Podge to break it apart. You're just going to kind of press with the Mod Podge on top of your foil and it is going to tear little pieces off. That's totally fine. It gives it a much more natural look than having a big chunk sitting there. I like that. If it bothers you, you can add more layers. Just gently tapping it down and the Mod Podge will dry clear so you won't see it once it dries like this. And we're just going to continue to do this around our entire edge and then around our second bowl as well to give it a nice gold detail. Okay, so here they are all done. I think they look super pretty. This one is still drying, so that's why it looks a little bit darker. This is what it looks like with the gold foil on. And we are gonna put these off to the side to finish drying, and then we'll be able to decorate with them. And I'll show you a few different ways that you could use these. Last 
last thing that we're going to do is work with our vase. So I removed the balloon from inside and this is what it's looking like. I think it looks really, really nice. I love like the organic shape and texture of it. And I just think it turned out really pretty. What I want to do to finish this off is just give it a light sanding. I started right over here to test it out just to kind of even any big texture changes out. And I also really like the color that it gives when it sands it down. You get a contrast of like the light and the dark cement and I think that's really pretty so we're gonna do a light sand all over and then this will be ready to go to sand it I want something a little bit more detail focused so I'm gonna use <laughs> Nala's old nail dremel so this is for dog nails and it's just like a little sandpaper dremel tool that you can use to buff their nails down I don't use this on her anymore she does not like it the vibration and the sound is super stressful for her we don't use this I go and take her to get them clips so I'm going to use it to sand this instead and I have used this on other things to sand before and it's actually really really useful because you can get into small little nooks and it's pretty powerful definitely a good tool to have on hand if you have one of these and don't use it anymore but I'm just going to put it on the low setting to just lightly buff over everything up this week's video. I hope that you enjoyed seeing how to use concrete to make bowls and a vase and I think it's so cool how we can use the DIY concrete bowls for so many different purposes and not just use them as a regular bowl. You can have them be a catch-all tray, a jewelry holder, a candle holder, a bookend, so many things and because they have some weight to them the options are really kind of endless. The vase turned out so beautifully so I hope that you enjoyed seeing how to do those things and if you give them a try make sure to leave me a comment and let me know I love hearing how it turned out for you and if you haven't already don't forget to like and subscribe so you can see more of my content every single Sunday and thank you guys so much for watching I'll see you next Sunday mm -hmm.